What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Ford Air. Another what the truck, Kyle? What the truck? How's it going, guys? Good, dude. So, you really were ambitious this year. You got to tell everybody what are we looking at, dude? This is my 2023 SEMA project. It's a 23 Super Duty I built. I stuck some stickers on it and some bolt-ons. <laughs> okay, but for real. It started as a Platinum Crew Cab. Um, I chose to use a Crew Cab because they don't make high trim standard cabs, but I was trying to do a tribute to the High Boy, the golden era of Ford pickups. And I think the perfect truck back in the day would be a high option two-door four-wheel drive. You know, a really rare Marty, the lowest production. And I thought if I'm gonna do a tribute to that, I might as well start with a high trim truck and make it as cool as I could. So what exactly did you do? How did this start? You know, what was the step one to, here's my idea. So I originally actually started with a standard cab XLT with a lot of options, which is not this truck. It was also a 23 HO diesel. Um, and we did a lot of module digging to realize what it was gonna to take to add these options to your basic truck. And our biggest hold up that we had is there was no, all the Platinums, Limiteds, and King Ranches are called Job 2 for 23 production. So there wasn't even VIN numbers assigned to these trucks till after June. And you know SEMA's Halloween, so you didn't have a lot of time. So we couldn't even find a VIN number to like get compatible hardware to outfit a truck. And then the next problem we ran into is these use a blade key versus a push key. And the blade key is assigned to a VIN number. So you can't run a keyless module on a blade key truck and assign it without having like a whole donor rig, a stolen truck, a Copart truck, or a different truck. I'm like, well, there's no trucks to be had. So I scrapped that idea and said, I need a crew cab. Fortunately, I had ordered this truck day one of October in 23 when the order bank opened, but- 22. 22, yes, you're correct. I didn't think I was ever gonna get the truck because it kept getting pushed back, pushed back, like everybody's high trim truck. So I started seeking a truck and it's, the Platinum Tremor that you'll see on my Instagram that I bought and didn't show much of, I originally bought that truck and got to town on it. Well, it had a little bit of hardware issues that I didn't like the truck, but I was gonna make it work. So over there's the carcass of the crew cab that this came from. I found a black takeoff bed because the Tremor was also an egg black crew. And I have all the components here to get started, but like I say, that truck was gonna be a little bit harder path to get to where I needed to. And out of nowhere, this truck, which is technically this truck in its crew cab cab form, showed up to the dealership just by pure surprise. So I got to actually go buy the truck I ordered that was the perfect truck to do this with. And by then, we'd already had a standard cab. We'd already had a crew cab platinum. We'd already had everything here, so we knew what to do. We just started tearing this truck down. We got our frame on the way and we started switching every component out of this truck. Okay, so for clarity, this is the truck that you started with. Is this it? truck behind me bed, is this truck. VIN number. They both share the same VIN number. Correct. And yes. the and reason why, pickup. right. So the reason how that works is, explain to them, like within the first six months. Within six months of production of a pickup, you can go to your Ford parts department and you can order the factory VIN stickers or if you got your windshield done and they wiped it with acetone, the truck got sideswiped and your local body shop needs to replace the cab, the B-pillar, whatever it is, or if you're doing a cab replacement, and fortunately since the truck was brand new, it was still within that window where I could get the stickers to keep so the truck the you, truck it became. So you got a brand new single cab cab itself and you got a brand new single cab long bed chassis and then you got the stickers. So would that still have on the B-pillar the original sticker and then this has a new sticker? Everything was peeled and void off of this. So let's show them what all you had to really take out of this because everybody thinks it's so easy to make a platinum. So you just, what? You take the tailgate panel yeah. and you take the dashboard and you take a couple emblems, right? Yeah, so I've, I've barely put this thing back together just so the parts were on it. It's obviously to get the harnesses and everything out. But everything from B-pillars forward is used, obviously, because it stays the same truck. Yeah, literally, like the whole back seat's perfect. Back door panels are perfect. 3.9 miles when it was pulled apart. The headliner, that must have been really tricky, huh? Yeah, and you can see all the components are missing out of it because we had to utilize them to make the crew. There's literally nothing left on the dash. Like, that is stripped, like... It's like a carcass in the middle of the desert. There's nothing. Same with the frame. I mean, the frame has a couple... Uh, Trivial pieces, long bed uh, brake lines or crew long brake lines. 
the fuel tanks in the bed. We had to buy all that new, but. So what are you gonna do with this now, with um, the cab? I'm gonna use this cab, I don't know. My first thought was to buy a salvage truck and fix it with it, but since this cab is 23 only and it's Super Duty only, um, I feel that there's gonna be somebody that's buying a damaged truck or has a damaged truck and will have a good market value. Because when I, that's a good story, when I started doing that truck, I couldn't buy a cab. Let's hear the story. So, you know, it's no big deal. You're gonna just turn your truck into a two-door. What are you gonna do? You call Ford, you order the frame, which I ordered first, because it went off to powder coat, and you gotta build a foundation to build the whole truck. So I started switching, but when I went to go order a cab, there was a little bit of, uh, oh, it isn't available yet, hang on, we gotta call Detroit, we gotta see. Well, it turns out we couldn't even buy a cab. They gave us a six month back order date, and my cool was gonna pass. So I had here a 2020 standard cab, which is very, very similar with the exterior um, cab corners being the only difference. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just use that. So I ordered cab sides to put onto it. I don't know, man, I'm really weird and funny. And I just thought that if this truck was gonna be such a nice, cool, brand new truck, it should be all original paint, all the way it should have came. So I went and bought another truck to borrow the cab off of. So that makes the reason why we have a third truck in the shop right now. Yeah, two and a half, however you want to see. That truck was also bought brand new. Um, and this is an XLT. It is, it's bone stock. Um, and I removed the cab off this truck. In lieu, basically lifted the cab off this truck, took the repainted 20 cab that had the uh, cab corner swap and put it onto this truck, put it back in its stock variation. And then we used that original paint cab over here, which I know is, you guys are probably gonna giggle. It's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work for the paint to be OEM, but I just wanted the truck to be OEM paint. And it is. So in the future, you know, when someone goes and starts looking at it, that is 100% OEM. So let's, let's give like a real, now that we've kind of given a reasoning of what it is, let's show this truck. Let's yeah. show from front to back. What, what did you do to it? Cause it's, even if it is just a platinum, it's not just a platinum, like you've That's added so much to it. So yeah, tell me about the modifications that you've done to it. So the whole build started around wagon wheels. I knew I wanted to put white wagon wheels on it. You guys can agree, disagree, have your own opinion, but a freewheel pickup has wagon wheels. 70s, 80s trucks had wagon wheels. I wanted a big billet wagon wheel, um, which also went with the stripes. I knew I was doing it. Um, from there, I was like, how am I gonna bring this 23 Super Duty? What's the size of these? To feel? They're 20 by 12s. And what exactly are they? Uh, they are American Force Ridge CCs, which stands for concave. That's what gives the spoke that cool, nostalgic look. The deepness. And then the tires are Mickey Thompson 40s. Um, I wanted to keep, obviously, a cool old school tire, but obviously the wheel size is larger. But when you start putting 15s or 16 fives on a new Super Duty, they kind of look like, you know, kind of silly. I think proportionally, this really does fit it very well. I like it. I think it's perfect. Um, but yeah, so I was trying to figure out how I was gonna make the truck look old without looking old. I didn't want to put a tube um, Old or retro? Side. Retro, you're correct. I didn't want to start putting tube steps on the truck or a double chrome roll bar, which people think I should have. I wanted it to feel like if Ford was to offer a freewheel package in 2023, how it would feel. It, it wouldn't be an exact sidestep of 1979. It would be with some new style. Um, so things that we did to the truck is, it's really hard to tell, but it has a grill that is influenced by a 79 pickup. Um, it has the KC lights, which is a kit that they are coming out with hopefully any day so that people can buy them. How do you like that? I love it. I think it looks great. And I like that you don't have to modify the truck to put them on. Yeah, it just goes right. As you know, I'm kind of a sissy and don't like drilling holes or changing anything. So it's two notches and your plastic bumper pieces. And you're done, you're on. So then we get this on here, I go, that looks great. But then the fog lights look cheesy because the platinum fog lights are like two inches OD when they're inside of the fog pocket. So we opted to build a fog pocket that looked OEM, 
that held another Pro 6. Yeah, but that's it's also, it's all billet. That, that's, that's a pretty big chunk of aluminum. Yeah, it is. Um, Factory. Worn winch, of course, which... Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, we couldn't get, so we had to do. But we made that happen. Got the Factor 55 Ultra Hook. And then, what lift and suspension are you running on here? It has a one-up off-road, nine-inch lift. Um, if you do not know who one-up off-road is, and you're looking to lift your Super Duty, this isn't even marketing, they're not paying me. I'm telling you, you need to go look at their lifts. Because these guys have put in tons and tons of R&D and years worth of testing to make a truck actually drive how a lift truck should. And this thing drives really nice. Three people have driven it now and they can't stop talking about how great it drives but so what exactly is the kit so you said it's a nine inch kit it is a nine but it can be adjusted okay it can go seven to nine um based on a couple components it's pretty cool how you built this man those arms are beautiful too all the billet it's kind of sad the powder coat on i mean everything under here is powder coated so tell us that's why i had to do it to powder coat everything but Man, those things were lookers when they showed up. He offers them in raw, polished, and I think anodized black. For everybody that's watching, every single thing you're looking at is an original part that Kyle had powder coated, prismatic. You're running which colors on here? Uh, it's stealth charcoal on the axles and frame, and then it's super chrome plus on all the lighter colors. And then there's a couple hints of illusions uh, orange underneath the truck. That's kind of an inside joke here at the shop. Everybody says I'm too conservative, so they they pushed me to. I love that you're still running a full size spare under that. Yeah. Okay. Is that a stock spare? No, it's a matching tire for the truck, just a smaller diameter slightly. The wheel's original. Okay, that's really cool. I love that everything, like you chrome this, like that's so cool. Every single thing. <laughs> that's a good one. Every single bolt on this truck, every single bolt has been removed and retorqued by hand because if you take an impact, it eats all the plating off. So when you start looking, every piece of hardware on the truck stayed clean. It's a brand new truck. If you take an impact and you're screwed. So. Wow. And then you did a few other mods that are very subtle, like you painted a few different pieces. I did, so the steps, I knew I was getting rid of the steps. The plan was to cut the steps out of the bed weld them, body work and get rid of them. And then the step panel got released by, I mean, Sinister D, so I don't know who has it. And I was like, oh cool, that's a nice alternative. And I started reading through all the forms where they're posting them, and there was like 90% hate for removing the steps. Which gave me a complex, I'm like, oh crap, maybe I should leave the steps. The truck's tall, I think they're dorky, they'll grow on me, and others seem to like them. So we color matched the textured pockets to hide them, but we also moved them up an inch and a half, and we pushed them in three quarter. When you look at that truck, it is insanely noticeable how low they sit and how much gap is back here. I mean, I get dirt comes out and I get that your toes don't rub the pocket, but it looks lost. So by tucking this pocket, I feel that it made it look a little bit cleaner um, and gave me a little bit of closure as to how butt ugly they are. We did the same in the back. We color matched the, the component around the bumper just to try to help make it more invisible as to how cheesy they are. So what the are center of the cab is the most modifications. Just show us what all did you have to do. So obviously it has a power slider, ooh, big deal, it's just a window, but it has to work. And to make it work, it doesn't clear the standard cab interior plastic pillars, it doesn't clear the headliner. So there's some clearance in, some reshaping that has to be done in there. Um, the inside of the truck has a center seat belt and all of them, because it doesn't matter what cab length it is, it has, you can see it actually has a big pod that sits up above the back wall. So when the slider was out, we removed that pod out of, you know, it's a welded in bracket. And then we had to actually build an upholstered panel in the truck that flowed and looked original without bringing your eye to. I'm not a big stereo box guy or craziness because that's a quick telltale that you cheated and covered something up. So between getting rid of that, this truck has Pro Power, which is the 2K onboard generator that they build now. So there's an inverter that sits in the back of the truck on the rear shelf 
and that clashes with the factory sub, which clashes with the power slider motor because of all the positions of everything now. So there's a ton in there. It has a crew cab harness in a standard cab pickup. So there is a ton of wiring work, but an XLT harness, even if I could have bought one to put in this cab, doesn't support the options. So we had. So show us, what are the options? Tell us the difference. Let's pretend that this is a Doug Demure overview between a Platinum single cab and an XLT single cab. Tell us the differences between these two for everybody who thinks they're so easy and so similar. Well, like, kill me if I forget. For something. example, like this is off the shelf, right? Yeah, exactly, off my shelf. Obviously, Platinum's rubber has the stainless belt line. This one does not. Those pillars are textured with a textured cab corner, so we had to make it flow. Most people just color match this to their body or something, and it doesn't look right. So I chose to do that, but actual options, the biggest, the biggest influence for me was keyless. You know, it's got the keyless door handle, it's got the power fold mirrors, it's got power telescope. It's, it's got, got power the ding, boards. ding, dings. Yeah, Which it says the driver door is ajar. Um, <laughs> we... You got it. Oh yeah. Okay. Heated and cooled, powered seats, normal stuff, power steering, or you know, power column, forward and back, telescoping, big screen, um, heads up display is high trim trucks. So that's a huge difference, which you're not just going to make work. That also means you have to change the windshield because it has a different center laminate for reflection. So you literally had to change the windshield, yeah. the back window, like every ounce of this thing. Correct, and fortunately a lot of that was removed to go back into that other truck since it stayed together, but yes. What does that say? 38.4 miles, and you've already driven it a while. <laughs> you could call it a while. I mean, we Most drove guys, it. That's our trip home from the dealership. We drove it yesterday. Yeah, we drove it yesterday. It's been around Vegas slightly. Yeah, should we include some of the videos of us yesterday? I would. getting her dirty so now they now they saw you driving this thing through the water and enjoying it so how did it feel taking it out actually using it a little bit butt pucker yeah i mean it's a truck it's gonna get used i get that there's guys on the comments that think i need to go haul a cord of wood or go jump it or sink it in the mud bog but those are also guys that don't have nice trucks that take care of them this truck will not be an off-road rig it's purely a show-off toy i get that um and it will get used, but it's still, I fought so hard to protect this conversion to be done in its brand new form. But now I'm ripping the band-aid off and using this thing. Dude, I just like how clean it is. I mean, Ford did a really good job updating it. Yep. The last interior was nice, but this is really clean. And then obviously platinum on everything. I mean, you can't get any of these options unless it was a platinum. Like Correct. heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats, and like everything, you know, remote start. A lot like of the you comments said. say, oh yeah, you just go buy a tailgate. These parts don't exist right now. Unless you go jump Kentucky Ford trucks, plant fence out there with your cowboy buddies and steal some parts, there are not these parts to buy. The dealership, obviously, but whatever a part costs to assemble on the rig, they charge times 10 to buy all the cart. It hurts. Dude, they put platinum badges on everything in this model. Oh boy, if you miss it's a platinum, you're blind. They got all their marketing in here. Super cool. Man. So now what are you going to do with it? Drop the key. Yeah. Um, I'm going to drive it until somebody owns it. So let's say somebody watching wants to buy it. They actually can. They should hit you up. You guys can figure something out. Or you want it for now and they should leave you alone. No, it's for sure. Okay. This was a bucket list build and I did it. And it's cool. It's great. But as you might not know, I have three kids. So... Not very practical. So you're saying you're like the only guy that took a crew cab 
and made it a single cab, and now you're like, oh wait, where are my kids gonna go? Yeah, exactly. But you know what's cool is, uh, you know, when the wife tells you to go get milk, you can go leave the house by yourself and go get milk, there you go. I just made it so the kids can't bother me. Oh, sorry, honey, I can't bring the kids with. Man. This yeah, there's tons more options out here you can see that are high trend. LED tail lights now are only platinum and up. Um, as you can see, it has the LED tail lights, of course, being a platinum. That's a big argument because they got rid of that in the Larry S now. To get the cool tail lights, it's platinum and limited only. You get the power tailgate, which is new. What's cool is, yeah, your old tailgate's open, that was great, but in 23, they actually put a tailgate down camera on it along with tailgate down sensors. So now when you got a load of crap in the back of the truck and you're backing up, it doesn't just scream at you, you're reverse sensing, it actually works. And you probably can install that in a lower trim model, huh? I would think you'd work real hard to do so, yeah, if, if it's even possible. And then this also has the, you have all the lights in the bed and all yeah, that junk. Normal, okay. I'm too short. Has all that, but you can see there's where the pro power is for the new generator that comes in these. Which is kind of neat, I guess. What was the MSRP on this truck before you even did anything to it? So I ordered it day one, which has an MSRP blocked a little bit lower, but it was 94 and some change, just short of 95,000. Bougie tailgate right there. I think at this point you're closer to 97 for this truck. I really like how you did the this on the tailgate. It really breaks up because it's a lot of chrome on it. It is, and the original trucks had that thin panel in the back with the FORD and it circled it. And it yeah. was a higher trim truck. You had your cool, you know, XLT upper panel near lower, or you just had the stripes. So I was trying to run with that look. You can see it has load level sensors, which of course it's a platinum. So those are cool. If you've seen the videos on them, it has them front and rear. And what it does is when you hitch your trailer to the back and you're pulling forward, your reverse light will actually illuminate and it'll green light you on your perfect tongue load weight. And then if you're actually putting stuff in the back of the truck, it works like a full gauge. It'll beep, 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 and I'll tell you when the truck's full. Really? But what else is cool is if you throw a trailer on the back, it knows it's tilted, it actually motors the headlights down and keeps them out of people's eyes. Huh. Which, you know, it has a nine inch lift, so it's gonna be in everybody's eyes, but I guess it timed itself out on the battery. We have the ignition on so that we have more lighting with the lights. It's so, no more. So with that said, obviously those are rock lights. Whose rock lights are you running? KC. So is there anything that you think we haven't yet covered on this, or I think we pretty much got a lot of it. We did, yes. I mean, obviously, the running boards were shortened. There. What else was done in the middle of the truck? You saw the B pillars, you saw that. Just really, truly a pretty stock truck, except the hardest way possible to get to this end goal. Two trucks pulled apart, one, well, two put back together. Lots of money. Lots of parts from the dealership to achieve a truck that looks pretty stock with lift kit and stickers. I mean, we were joking about it before, but like legitimately in like a weekend, this could look similar to that truck. I mean, it won't, it won't have all the functions, but it'll look the same. Yeah, it'd be really easy. And they are pretty. I mean, this is a pretty truck, you know, yeah. change the headlights out, add the graphics, do a lift kit. Yeah, it's you know? still a good truck. It won't be a platinum, but it'll be a bitchin' truck. No, I'm I think a lot of people don't really care what this is. This was just, I wanted to do it. It's a missing link of what I think Ford should do. I think they should let you order an expensive truck. Because, I mean, that truck is a 70, I think $4,000 window sticker and it doesn't have a 360 camera. Like, that thing sucks. It's cool, it works good as a truck, but when I actually towed this to Vegas in a trailer behind this, this truck's a great truck, but once you get out of this truck and drive this truck, what a turd. Feels very, very base model, and this is as good as you could order this truck within reason. So what's funny, and uh, we could just mention it, you had to build this for SEMA in two months, but then you literally also had to build this to be able to tow this to SEMA in two months. Yeah, which sounds easy, but you know, when you unplug a wiring plug and you don't plug one in, which I did plug them all in, you end up with a lot of problems. Both of these trucks have been stripped. This one bare chassis, still a running chassis, but all the cab and nose and everything was unwired, undashed everything out. And this truck stripped down to bare rails. There was a lot of assemblies between these two trucks that had to get put together. And I didn't actually plan to finish the XLT for SEMA, 
but at the last minute, all of my uh, my tow rigs fell apart, and I didn't have a way to tow a 28 foot trailer with a heavy ass truck in it. So the old HO was that we had to get together. Made it happen though. We did. All right. Well, I think uh, maybe we need to figure out a way to get all these straightened out. We go take it for a ride. We could, yeah. Okay. So you're screaming. All right, so now let's see. It was like an 87 point turn to get it in here. Yeah, we got another truck. So hopefully this is a little easier now. We didn't even talk about the Bronco. Kyle, we didn't even mention the Bronco before. Huh? But I kind of feel like now we should at least talk a tiny bit about the Bronco. Which part? I you mean, tell me. first, it's back. Yeah. Second, you built it. I did. Second, Bolted on the lift kit on this one in stickers. His younger brother hit the gym. Yeah, he got a little bit bigger. But, you know, little brother swole. They still look good together. Because, like, this is like a five foot five guy who hit the gym hard. This little, is like the six foot two brother who hit the gym hard. This is little man syndrome over here that writes the checks. This is the guy that builds stuff. Big brother. Yeah. So tell me, what did you do on this thing? Because this was a lot more fab fab work, right? Yeah, this one. But uh, just as stupid. You had what, two months when you built this? Yeah, this one was done really quick too. This one started out as a base model steel wheel broke Bronco. And uh, I just wanted to build a wheeler. I didn't ever want to build a SEMA truck. So it got a... Uh, Solid axle, big rear axle. Lots and lots and lots and lots to support that. Air lockers, chrome alley shafts, coilovers. And what's crazy is that it looks pretty, but I could, I'll could i overlay us when we went snow wheeling with this thing. I mean, it works. It works too good. The truck's, the truck's too nice for how good it works. You could really get yourself into some spots with this thing, but you know, since it became a SEMA truck and became powder coated and pretty and nice, I don't think it'll ever get used as hard as it could. At least it's capable. And you know that you're never gonna really get stuck. It is capable. And the purpose of this truck now in life is to be a off-road toy um, up in the mountains of North Idaho. And it does that just fine. All right, well, I think what, we're gonna go close the shop up and let's take it for a rip. Yeah, I'm gonna back the Bronco in before we go. Oh, hey. What's up? <laughs> so something that I thought's cute is you have the seatbelt thing for five. Yeah, kinda. Why? It's a single cab. This would be a crew cab, baby. And then look. It's really cool how smart these are. Plug it in and then bingo. All right, how hard is this thing to drive? It drives really nice. Let's make it drive better. It's so not, not in PDID now. Why, why not? I don't like 15 year old service boys to touch my truck. <laughs> they have no idea what they're doing. It's kind of like the guys at O'Reilly's that tell you how smart they are with cars. Same mentality of people. Wow, they really got this. Yeah, I was about to say, you're doing it the hard way. Why don't you just, yeah. Because then your fingernail scratch it. There you go. Ooh, like a virgin. Did you take the thing off behind your head? No, it's still there. You should grab that. Should I get that for you? I don't have a hand on the back of my body. I got this, hold on. Right, show me how it works. Uh. Boom. Any other stickers? I think that's enough for now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Did you take the one off the screen? Yeah, they did it. Oh. Uh. My, my sales guy was a jerk. Shmageggy. I like this. What's the story behind that? Uh, it's an NOS air freshener I had and I thought if I'm gonna build a throwback truck, might as well do it. I know it's a Chevy, but it's still black with stripes, which is kind of neat. 
Yeah. And it's got rainbow butts. It's so. hard to see it for some reason. That's probably me. No, it's my camera. There we go. All right, so where are we going? Where do you want to go? I don't know. We got to show them how bad this dries. Okay. Okay. Oh, where is your dashboard full of lights? Mm, TPMS is on because I run the tire pressure lower than it wants to and I haven't adjusted it yet. Yeah, but why don't you have like a million lights on like everybody else who brings a brand new Super Duty to SEMA? Right, well we brought a drive line and no lights. That was kind of our goal. 38.5 miles. Should we find some snow or is that not a thing? That's, <laughs> that's real far. I know. I wish. Next time. If you guys want to see him take this thing snow wheeling, drop a comment below and uh or go to his instagram and start scumbagging him into it <laughs> <laughs> would you ever i don't know if this person's trying to let us go but i mean there you go that's sweet of her this is actually very comfortable they did a really nice job on the new trucks let's turn that on a little a little chilly how's your hand should i get the free sir yeah i might as well hit that xlt hit it turn well so. Let's go for uh, some butt warm, too. This is the perfect truck to drive. Look at the fall leaves changing. Ooh, this is pretty. So what are you going to do to outdo yourself? Or did you not know what when you built the Bronco? Man, I still think the Bronco might be cooler. This truck was a lot more work, but for wow, the Bronco was definitely cooler. Nobody had a Bronco to do. I mean, Super Duties, I know it's really hard to get a high trim truck and modify one this much this early, but I don't know. I built this one for me. The Bronco definitely, like we were talking about earlier, I think if I had to choose one, I'd probably choose the Bronco. It's, it's just so different. It's cool because you could actually utilize it for stuff. Not saying that you can't this. This truck will still tow, it'll drive, it'll do everything it needs to. But I personally don't need to drive around in a nine inch lifted on 40 Super Duty. It's not really the lifestyle I'm into. But you do need to drive around in a full hydro. Yeah, solid axle Bronco on 40s is less long. Yeah, totally long. That's more, cool. yeah. That's way better. I mean, <laughs> trucks are easy come, easy go, but fun toys, man. When you get that right toy, it's hard to let go of it. And that was one. You guys, let us know in the comments which one would you choose, this or the Bronco. Yeah, cost aside, just for coolness or usability. I mean, this truck's useless, just has the internet. It's junk. Couldn't tow a trailer, doesn't seat people. Can't put, uh, I don't know, all in the bed. Yeah. Yeah, it does have a tonneau cover, so it's basically useless. It's like a trunk. I think we're gonna just keep driving. We're gonna hang a little bit and then we're gonna pick you guys up. All right guys, I mean, look at this spot we just found. What the heck? Dude, look at this tree. We couldn't have planned that any better. Cut the corner and we're like, oh my gosh. Gorgeous. It's literally the freewheeling tree. This is awesome. This truck just looks so cool. All right guys, so if you don't already, go follow Delfab underscore underscore. Uh, are you, if anybody wants these stickers, Tell them uh, what. Tell us about these stickers, actually. So our door printing is a high-quality vinyl shop that has a lot of cross-the-country projects. Um, they took on the Bronco. They took on this truck, and we will be selling them in collaboration here shortly. We are finishing up the templates for crew cab short bed. Um, I don't think we plan to do extended cab, but if somebody really wants them, we will. But we'll have crew cab for short and long or standard for long. And they also have Bronco ones as well off of the 21 SEMA Bronco if you choose to like those. Awesome. And uh, if you guys can, smash the like button. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe. And drop a comment below, let me know. Do you like this better? Do you like the Bronco better? Do you think Kyle's an idiot? He should have left it a crew cab. Are my Crocs XLTs or not? You got them in four by though. Yeah, well that's true, but you can get XLTs in four by so. <laughs> I didn't say HL. Uh, all right, guys. See you later.